Welcome to our SQL Server Change Tracking Tutorial. Today we will learn how to turn on change tracking on SQL Server databases and tables, and how to retrieve change tracking logs and information using SQL queries. We will also learn how to perform change tracking cleanup manually. Open SQL Server Management Studio and connect to a SQL Server. Go to Databases and create a new table inside your SQL Server database. Create a column named ID and select Unique Identifier as its data type. Do not allow nulls in this column because this column will be used as a primary key. Set this column as primary key. To track changes in your table, the table must have a primary key. Create another column for random values and select Decimal as data type. For the purpose of this tutorial, we will keep this table very simple, having only these two columns. Save this table by selecting an appropriate title. We will call it Random Values. Your table will be available in the list of tables as soon as you refresh the list. Close the Table Design window now. Right-click on the database name and go to the Properties. Look for the Change Tracking page in the Properties. Here, change the change tracking from false to true. Change the other settings as per your requirements. In this tutorial, we will show you how to perform manual cleanup, therefore turn off the auto cleanup. Cleanup means deleting data from the change tracking table. Auto cleanup automatically deletes the change tracking data after the retention period defined above. Close the properties window now. Now, go to the properties of the table you want to track changes of. Again, look for the change tracking page. Here, change both change tracking and track column updated to true. When done, close the properties window. Now, insert some data into the random values table using the insert command. Use new ID to insert new unique identifier and random function to insert a random value. Multiply random number to 1000 to insert a larger number. Use the select command to display the data in the results below. Every time this query is run, a new row is added and displayed in the results below. Save this query to your system. Create a new query. We have two very important tables which contain the change tracking data. These tables are system tables and in this query, we will access them and get the change tracking information. Use the select command to display information from commit table. This table contains dates and times when changes were committed. The second table is the change table, which contains the primary key of changed row, along with nature of change. Here, we must provide the name of table, where we want to track changes. And the version number, 0 means all versions will be displayed. Run the query, to display the information in the results below. The commit ID in the commit table and the change version in the change table are equivalent. Here you will find all the primary keys against which data has been changed. You can check those primary keys here in the original table. I in the change operation column shows that all the rows were inserted. Now add another query to update a value in the random values table and see if the change tracking reflects it or not. This query will change the value from 14.44 to 15.87. Run this query to make the changes. Now, we can go back to the change tracking query and see the change log. This is the row that was changed using the update query. 
we can use the latest version number to track these changes. And as you can see, the change operation now shows U, which means the row was updated. The date and time against the same version number in the above table will show when this change was exactly made. We can combine these two tables to display meaningful information and track changes as we require. To combine these tables, move the commit table after a left join. And use the change version from change table and commit ts from commit table to join them. We have complete information in a single table now from where we can tell which rows have been changed, how, and when they have been changed. We can use the version number to track older and newer changes in these change tracking tables. Let's insert another row to our random values table and see the change tracking logs again. And here are both updated and inserted rows, along with their change date and time. Save the change tracking query as well, and close other unnecessary queries. Create a new query to clean up the change tracking data. The change tracking cleanup performed automatically after defined pretension period was disabled. Which means, we have to perform that manually. And we will perform that in the most simple and effective manner. We will simply turn off the change tracking and turn it back on in a single query. Select the database using the use command. First, turn off the change tracking of the table or tables if you are tracking multiple tables. Then turn off the change tracking on the database itself. Otherwise it won't work. While turning change tracking back on, we must start with the database itself. Meaning, first we must turn on change tracking on the database, then on the tables one by one. After completing the query, run the query. Now, go back to the change tracking query and run the query again. There is no data because data has been removed. Insert a new row and then come back and run the change tracking query again. Now there is change tracking data which means change tracking is available and working. You can also use the WHERE condition to narrow down your results. For example, let's use the date and time column to display changes after a specific time only. This row was changed before this time, therefore it will be excluded from the result. Now, if we change the query and display all changes before this time, the row excluded previously will be the only one displayed this time. And with this, we end our tutorial today. Thanks for watching. We hope you liked our tutorial. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more insightful tutorials and updates.